For much of their history, the productivity of Caribbean fisheries has been supported by fishing the large schools of snappers and groupers that form at specific times and places of year to reproduce. These fish spawning aggregations, with schools numbering in the tens of thousands, were capable of producing several tons of freshly caught fish in a few short days. Unfortunately, fishing these aggregation sites has proven to be unsustainable. Catching fish right before they spawn has led many of these stocks to disappear throughout the Caribbean over the past 30 years. Yet in some places, thanks to timely management and the support of the fishing community, some areas remain. One such site, called Gladden Spit, is located along the Mesoamerican Barrier Reef System in southern Belize. At least 17 species of fish spawn there, making Gladden one of the last and greatest aggregation sites in the world, and an important fishery for Belizeans. But managing Gladden as a fishery is a delicate balance. With the threat of stock collapses looming, managers are working to ensure that Gladden is not overfished. In addition to the creation of 15 marine protected areas throughout Belize, including one at Gladden Spit, managers work to support outside economic opportunities for fishers. And for southern Belize, this means tourism. Gladden is becoming well known as a dive ecotourism destination centered around one of its most famous residents, the whale shark. Whale sharks appear during spawning season to feed on the released eggs and milk. But for tourism to succeed as a fishery conservation tool, not only do fishers need to earn money as tour guides or boat captains, but the tourism industry itself needs to not cause its own unique set of damaging practices. And in the case of fish spawning aggregation sites, tourism needs to be certain that divers and boat traffic do not disrupt or prevent fish from aggregating and spawning. To help answer this question, a team of researchers, led by Dr. Will Heyman of Texas A&M University, has worked for over 10 years at Gladden, teaming up with local fishers to understand how to best protect not only the large schools of spawning fish, but also the livelihood of Belizean fishers. Their work, conducted through the Marine Managed Area Science Project of Conservation International and funded by the Gordon and Betty Moore Foundation, has helped reveal both the ecological and economic importance of Gladden Spit to Belize and the Western Caribbean. The problem with these aggregations uh, is that they are very predictable in space and time, and what happens is fishermen find out about it, and they all come and they aggregate where the fishes are aggregating, and they catch them, and they sell them, or they eat them. And that's not a big problem until it becomes unsustainable, until you know they take too many. And the fact is that the fish are very vulnerable at that time, obviously. The fishes that are being caught there are generally gravid, either filled with eggs or, or sperm, uh, right prior to reproduction. When I was a young man, I must say, we used to go to one of these spawn in the area like uh, Emily, and you can catch as much grouper as you think you can handle. And um, so happens that they start to uh, diminish. We're not sure what happened, but uh, the scientists they say it's um, overfishing. I've seen the fish start deplete, depleting in a rapid way that I think we all need to get together and do something about it. One research project the team has begun studying is the potential effect that divers may have on aggregated fish. Using archival footage, they watched over nine hours of film showing divers and schools of fish interacting, attempting to see if and how the fish might become disturbed. And more importantly, if disturbing the fish prevented them from spawning. We've been doing a study here in Belize to try to evaluate the impacts of ecotourism on spawning aggregations. We are seeing some reactions of the fish to the divers. Uh, they're very, very minimal. It really doesn't seem like these divers are having any impact at all. One of the important observations the team made was that disturbed fish react much in the same way to whale sharks as they do to divers. They also noted that the position of the diver can be a determining factor in whether the school will be disturbed. And although only 1% of an estimated 250,000 fish were disturbed, the team of researchers noted that disturbances were much more likely to occur when a diver approached a school from directly above. What does this mean for Belizean fishers like Jack Young and Eloy Cuevas? 
Although this was only a preliminary work, and much more research on the effects of larger numbers of divers, noises, and boat traffic needs to be done, the early signs suggest that dive tourism will help conserve spawning aggregations and provide meaningful economic alternatives in southern Belize. I don't need to explain this to anybody. If you read the newspaper, if you look at the web, you see it everywhere all the time. Uh, fisheries are crashing left, right, and center, um, and we are seeing a reduction in the availability of of fisheries resources. We're seeing a reduction in the numbers of fish on the reef, particularly uh, large groupers, large snappers. If we can replace commercial fishing with more of a ecotourism dive industry, um, we may have a chance at conserving spawning aggregations and thus bringing back the healthy um, fountains of reproduction, the volcanoes of reproduction uh, that support the health uh, of the entire fishery of the entire Caribbean. But my sons, they are all involved in tourism. I have three sons, two daughters. Way of just sharing your knowledge and explaining things to people that they don't know. Take them around into your environment that you know very good. You know, it's, it's a whole new world for a lot of people coming to Belize and it's great for us as local, local people from Belize. You know, it's a whole learning and sharing situation. Dr. Heyman believes that dive tourism at Gladden Spit can be developed by following a code of conduct meant to protect spawning fish and whale sharks while still offering a unique, world-class experience for divers. And it offers Southern Belize the chance to expand their economy without threatening the schools of fish that are the foundation of their community and culture. I say, you know, if we don't protect them now, we'll be in some serious trouble. So don't wait until the stock is gone and then you start putting uh, regulations.